Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations. As I probably told you in another video, my very first ham radio rig as a novice comprised a Halicrafters SX130 receiver, a shortwave radio receiver, and a Viking Adventurer, E.F. Johnson Viking Adventurer transmitter with a crystal for 7,185 kilo cycles, which uh, nowadays I guess you'd say would be 7.185 megahertz. In any case, when I got my general class license one year later, that would be in 1967, when I got my general class license, I was able to use a variable frequency oscillator, a VFO, and I got a knight, uh, as in the knights in shining armor, a knight kit VFO already assembled and connected it to the Johnson, EF Johnson transmitter and still used the Halicrafters receiver. Now, in order to key that radio, I had to leave that night kit oscillator on continuously. For some reason, uh, I was unable to key the, uh, the oscillator itself. I guess there wasn't a provision to do that. So I had to key the transmitter but leave the oscillator on constantly. So in the receiver, when I was transmitting, I constantly heard my signal as a steady carrier, whether the key was down or up. And at that time, it was a regular old straight key, a brass pounder. Well, that's the way it was, but I had at least variable frequency control, continuously variable frequency control, a general class license, which at that time conveyed all amateur privileges. And I found that to be just a wonderful, wonderful luxury, but rather annoying because of the constant tone uh, of that oscillator signal. I couldn't, and there wasn't any definite da de da de da da de da that I could hear from my signal. All I heard was da constantly. So I had to kind of guess at what I was sending just by the feel of my hand on that brass pounder. Just thought uh, that was kind of um, interesting. I, I read about that on one of the uh, sites today as I was researching the topic of grid block key, which I find exceedingly difficult to uh, get any information about on the internet or on YouTube. Very, very difficult circuits to allow you to use grid block keying. I found some of those, but I haven't found any uh, videos or any uh, files that actually show diagrams of how grid block keying is done. So if I can find something or find any kind of documentation, I'll make a, a video about that. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to describe that kind of primitive first VFO radio back in 1967. The Night Kit Oscillator, the E.F. Johnson Viking Adventurer Transmitter, and the Halicrafters SX Sierra X-Ray 130 shortwave radio receiver. It was fun. It brings back memories. Stan Jabalisco, W1GV, saying 73. And so long, which, even a net primitive radio, always somehow came out over the air as did da 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 da